So oh, did y'all see that Carisha going gonna be on Carisha Please tonight? Saucy gonna interview her and she gonna tell the truth about her relationship with Diddy, with PC Diddy. <laughs> Welcome back, y'all. I'm in a good mood today, bitch. How is your day? I'm sorry, queens. Let me call y'all some queens. Anyway, girl, so I was a little tired this morning after I stayed up to do that damn uh, funky video last night. And if y'all haven't watched it, go watch it because I'm thinking about deleting it. I'm thinking about deleting the video this weekend. So if you haven't watched the Funky Denise, um, the Funky and Armand, he went live last night. They told me that after I got off, uh, got off, Claudia got on there, caught Claudia called in live or whatever, and she said that she got the text from Nene, the text about Nene and um, Al talking about her. She said that Nene screenshotted it sent it to Al and she must have threatened him or something because Al ended up t just going ahead and tell, tell, telling, Cla telling Claudia, excuse me. So I don't know girl, but I, yeah, I, I probably won't speak on no YouTube beef again. <laughs> exactly. They said, um, Funky, Funky said he ain't gonna respond to it and he probably, you know, I feel him. Anyway, child, but so tonight though, make sure y'all set y'all notifications if y'all don't have y'all notifications on because after Carisha go on her, she said she gonna tell it all, but then Santana, let me lock my motherfucking doors. I told y'all I work in the ghetto. <laughs> but anyway, um, y'all, why is this girl, oh my God, I'm trying not to look over there. Why is this girl pulling her son in a laundry basket? I, my, my right hand up to God, one of them plastic laundry baskets. She got this baby. He about, he looked like he about five girl this is some ghetto shit anyway <laughs> nevertheless back to what i was saying so after um so after carisha go live with santana i wonder if she really but y'all think she gonna really spill all the tea about diddy it looked like she was crying and shit too so like girl tell us the e true hollywood story or tell the police better yeah bitch tell the fbi ho exactly i don't know but I don't know if she gonna tell too much because Diddy, she doing it on Revolt TV and Diddy on Revolt TV. Like, girl, I hope you okay though, Pooh. You better hook up with them uh them Haitians down in uh in Lauderdale. You bet ooh, and now she she done took the boy out the uh laundry basket, girl. They at the bus stop and he crying and acting a damn fool. Girl, these people is crazy out here. Y'all been Y'all better not be dragging y'all kids around in them motherfucking laundry baskets. I ain't got the time today. I ain't got the bandwidth. I'm telling y'all I ain't got the bandwidth. Anyway, so welcome back anyway. <laughs> so y'all know I'm on my lunch break, child. I'm going to make this short and quick today because like I said, I'm still a little tired. I need some fruits and vegetables, some electrolytes. I need all of the things today <laughs> to get me back up to status quo. I said, I ain't going to, I was like, that's going to be the last video that I record in the evening. And then I seen that Carisha shit and was like, hold on. <laughs> Hello, bitch. Hello, bitch. <laughs> exactly. I'll see y'all later on tonight, girl. It come on at seven o'clock. It, it said remote TV, but I'm assuming she gonna have it on YouTube, but I don't know. So I, if I watch it tonight, I'm gonna watch it tonight. So after the, um, after the interview, y'all come holler at me, let's sip some cocktails or smoke some, and, uh, talk about what the fuck Carisha had to say about Diddy ass. Anyway, so in other news, <laughs> in other non-beef and crazy news, um, did y'all see the, um, the trailer for Love and Marriage in Detroit? So, Carlos King dropped the trailer to Love and Marriage Detroit. We getting a season two. They ain't been back in, you know, in so long. I didn't think the show got renewed. And didn't nobody like season one. Did y'all like season one? I didn't like season one. But apparently, Marceau Sons, because all of these niggas give Marceau Sons. I didn't like none of the men. I kind of liked Kobe, man. I forgot, um, I forgot his name or whatever. Or... Yeah, the fine, tall, chocolate one. But then he got a little, he got a little chauvinistic too. You know what I'm saying? So I, oof, I don't know. But I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna tell y'all about the new couples because I did um, a little research on the new couples and who the fuck they is. And I mean, I guess we could give it a chance. My whole thing is, Carlos King, who asked for this? We asked for Bell Collective. We want to see the bells. We need to know whether or not Cliff is down there putting his hands on Latrice, uh, Latrice, 
And or y'all gonna help this girl out because it seems like everybody knows she's in an abusive relationship. And then Akeisha, I seen Akeisha commenting on Shade Room posting shit. Akeisha, I don't give a fuck about none of that. When is the show coming back? I need to see if she replies to my comment. Because, girl, we don't give a fuck about none of that. I want to know where the bells are. Did Marie ever get her her fix properly? Did she ever come out as the lesbian that she is? Allegedly? <laughs> I don't know. Did, uh, what's it called? Peter Street? Did the damn street ever get built? We need, it's too many unanswered questions down there in, in Mississippi. Take us back down yonder to Mississippi. Speaking of Mississippi, um, when is uh, the pink opening back up? They've been supposed to open the pink back up. Where are the strippers and Mercedes? And I'm, where are the strippers? Where is the pink? Y'all falling off. That ain't Carlos King show, but it reminded us since we talking about Mississippi. <laughs> anyway, child, so then I'll talk about, um, I'm gonna talk about Nelly motherfucking ass. Nothing's really going on with the Huntsville girls. Mel still doing her um, back to school uh, lives or whatever on TikTok from 2.30 to 5.30. I'm gonna catch that this afternoon. Sunny still promoting the Mo Sun product. I told y'all I'm gonna go ahead and buy it and see what the tea is, you know. Even though I'm, um, you know, y'all y'all heard my spiel about buying hair care products from people that don't have 4 C hair, but I digress. Sunny also posted um something and it was like she posted a meme and was like, I get you don't get invited if you don't sometimes you don't get invited if you don't do coke. Is that shade, Sunny? <laughs> was that shade to Stormy now? They down there doing lines? We know Marcus Jordan doing lines. Did y'all see my, uh, Michael Jordan's son, Marcus Jordan, girl sniffing a line in broad daylight in France? Bitch, now I know they free in France, but that don't mean sniff a line in the middle of brunch. Uh, bitch, imagine you got your lamb chops and your mimosa and you look over and your date like... <laughs> Yeah, but what I was saying was, <laughs> Michael Jordan, I'm sorry, baby. You need to get control of your grown-ass kids because ain't no way you out here in Bring back embarrassment. Bring back shame because back in the day, I could not take my ass out the house with no bonnet on my head, walk around with no house shoes or nothing. My mama used to always, don't embarrass me. My mama always used to say, don't embarrass me. You represent me when you walk out this house. Even as a grown adult, I promise y'all. <laughs> even as a grown adult, sometimes I used to come around looking a damn mess and my mom would be like, you represent me, go back in the house and I'll wait. <laughs> like if we used to go to the thrift store and go eat lunch all the time. And if I walked out the house looking crazy, my mom would be like, I'll wait on you, go back in there and change and uh, flat iron your heart real quick. <laughs> <laughs> like get your shit together marcus jordan you should not be out here embarrassing your father like that okay he is a great he ain't did shit michael jordan then went pretty much most of his career without no drama he is one of the upstanding denzel washington samuel l jackson type of black men that we have in the entertainment business and in the you know just famous in general Michael Jordan is amongst that group. And now he got your grown ass. It's bad enough you be fucking with them type of hoes. And then you gonna sniff a line in the middle of France and then get caught. Girl, I guess. Anyway, let's talk about Love and Marriage Detroit. So, tell me if y'all interested. Do y'all give a fuck? Or are y'all gonna watch it? This ain't nothing but Mitch's The Continuation of Huntsville. Just like all of them Mitches, and I'm not surprised that Marceau liked them because all of these men seem like they had the, the condescending, chauvinistic, um, misogynistic type of attitude that they had down there in Huntsville. So I see why y'all get along. Okay. Anyway, so Brandon and Christina, uh, remember Christina was like a perfect patty. That's what I used to call her because she act like she perfect patty. Um, and then Brandon, her man who trying to get his music shit going on, he a Mitch too. I ain't like his motherfucking ass either with that man bun with that gray in and girl police. Um, so he said that they, they were separated. He filed for divorce. She was crying and shit talking about 
she was lonely and it was just too much yada 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 i went on her instagram page they look very much together <laughs> so i'm sure this is either this is a storyline or this was filmed a while ago and they still back together you know what I'm saying? But to me, this is just a continuation of what happened season one. We ain't see shit from them season one, but both of them being messy, arguing all the time. It seemed like their relationship wasn't going to last when we first met them. So, okay, now y'all filed for divorce, but y'all didn't get divorced because they back together. I'm telling y'all. They back together now, you know, as of recently. So, I don't know. Anyway, so Kobe is pregnant. Um, her fine man, little chocolatey, um, little chocolatey. He was. They were going back and forth about him taking care of her, and I guess he ain't giving her enough attention. You know how some pregnant girls they some complaining ass bitches. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Every pregnant friend and family member I had was mean as a motherfucker when they was pregnant. I guess it's because of the hormones. But I'm talking about mean. I literally got into a fight because my cousin was, she was big and pregnant. She was, she a Scorpio too, child. And she was getting into it with this girl. I ended up having a fight with the girl. The I had on my cousin polo shirt, you know, like back in the day, the little polo shirts with the, oh, they still have it, like the polo shirts with the bar. Anyway, child, so I had on her shirt when I was fighting the girl, ripped the shirt, a few days later, she cursed me out and said I needed to replace her shirt. Bitch, and I'm fighting for you in the middle of all of girl, I guess. Pregnant girls mean, so Kobe, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they having marital problems <laughs> when she pregnant. Notice a lot of dudes be leaving their girls when they pregnant or right after they have a baby, which is fucked up on the dude's part. But... Uh, the men can't deal with the elevated attitude and the hormones and stuff when you're pregnant. Anyway, um, Christina. Oh, yeah. So, I seen Christina and Brandon and Kobe and all of them. They were together, like, in May and in June. Like, they was at events. They got pictures and shit. They was at events together. So, it's safe to say they, they still friends. Because remember at the end of last season, Christina and Kobe was getting into it about, um brand deals and stuff because they both influencers and shit so it's safe to say that they cool again anthony and he is the king mitch the chocolate one who ran to atlanta to get a check balance exactly so i guess he back at home latoya who is the um therapist or whatever remember she the doctor i still don't know why she got with him i still he ain't got no money he don't look cute and he got a bad bitch attitude I, I never, you know how, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, child, so it looks like she's trying to be controlling and dictate the family and what everybody do, especially with the kids, because, you know, they got two little boys. Um, I don't know. We'll see what that's giving. It does seem like he's still on his King Mitch shit, you know, he being the best bitch that he could possibly be, because at the end of the trailer, he was going off on somebody, talking about burning some shit down or whatever. So, they do have two new couples on there. So, the first new couple, they was on, they like joined them on the little trip or whatever, or when they was like beefing about the publicist. Their names is Bravo and Lakita. Little light skin. Bitch, Bravo cute. <laughs> Bravo kind of fan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know he a married man. You know, I'm not the coleslaw type of bitch. I was just saying your husband kind of cute girl. Exactly. So hopefully they'll be a little uh, a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure what his wife do. She's a pretty lady. Um, in the trailer they were she was crying and stuff and she said she was weary every time he leave the house and I get and her father passed away and y'all Detroit is a dangerous city. I don't know if y'all be watching Tubi, uh, Tubi movies or have y'all ever watched this show called The Dirty D? If y'all ain't watched The Dirty D Bitch, your best friend from St. Louis is here to tell you. First of all, make sure you subscribe and like this video. But the Dirty D is that girl. If you like some ghetto kind of hood, you know what I'm saying, TV shows, it gives power, but drugs, killing, sex, and black folks. I love the Dirty D. So it's on Tubi and it's on season three is on Peacock. In case y'all couldn't find it, it's on Peacock and it's good. Anyway, so Detroit Dangerous, so I understand why Bravo wife, her name Lakeithia or something like that, Lakeitha, why she's upset. Now, Bravo, girl, Bravo, his Instagram called Detroit Bravo. 
So I scurried on to his Instagram just to see, you know, because I was trying to figure out what do these people do. Girl, Detroit Bravo seemed like he the most accomplished. The new people, the new men seem like they more accomplished. I think Carlos King probably heard what we said and how we didn't like man one of these new husbands and brought on some other husbands that maybe we are like. So he do give a little chauvinistic vibes a little bit. But girl, he owned... Um, he owned multiple clubs and restaurants in Detroit. All of the celebrity, uh, uh, excuse me, all of the celebrities when they go to Detroit, they stop at his spots. They look like some very nice black owned. I would go there. I would go there for brunch and shit. If you in Dallas, it puts you in the mind of kitchen and cocktails, canvas. You know what I'm saying? Some of the trendy black American places, Brew City. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, okay. He looks accomplished. This is what I'm talking about. This man opened in several locations. He just opened like a taco restaurant and then the other one is gonna be called Chandelier Detroit or something or I don't know, but I was like, okay. He got a, a lot of businesses listed and the businesses look like they popping. Like I said, most of the celebrities when they come there, they stopping at his spot. I said, okay, this is what I'm talking about. If you go show me Detroit, show me how they get down in the D. You know what I'm saying? Show me some movers and some makers, uh, some names, you know? So anybody um, on my channel, if you're from Detroit, tell me if you know. I think one of the places is called 68 something. I don't know. Tell me if y'all know who um, Bravo Detroit is. Apparently, he's the owner of multiple restaurants. It's crazy. I should have wrote it down. Um a lot of restaurants and bars or whatever and they look like they popping child I guess Lakeitha wife might not have to work wifey might just be sitting at home worried about you you know in her robe living the final life I ain't mad at it so I'm excited to see them and see what they talking about cause if you gonna be chauvinistic and act like a big dog at least have a big dog qualification you know what I'm saying? At least give me businesses, businessman. You taking care of everything and you looking good. You and your wife. Exactly. Because they're a nice looking couple. Okay. And then the other new couple we have is Kim and Kimberly and Marcel Dobine. Kimberly and Marcel Dobine. So on the trailer, remember, they was like, meet the Dobines. And they have two kids. Um found a video of them like way back then or whatever they had like this big dream wedding or whatever it was given that they always wanted to be kind of like a notable couple or like a popular couple i'm not sure um so he is okay so both of them went to hbcus kimberly went to alabama a uh, a and m and he went to florida a and m so i noticed that tisha the girl kimberly she has a um she's like an entrepreneur she has a brand called posh and popular she does kind of like lifestyle stuff i noticed on her page though tisha was liking all of her posts latisha scott and she follows latisha latisha follow her i wonder did latisha go to alabama a m too because kimberly is a delta and we know i don't know i don't know y'all so I also know that she follow Mel, but Mel don't follow her. I wonder do she know the uh I wonder do she know um did she go to college with them or do she know the Alabama girls or whatever the T is or did did Letitia and them help them get on the show? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. So her husband though is a mortgage banker and they have a mortgage banking company. I think the wife Kimberly helps out with the mortgage banking company. But um, he has, he's decorated. He has a lot of accolades and stuff like that too. So, okay. Okay. And he tall, you know, a tall man always get it. You know, you always go get some extra points if you, oh, I'm 6'3". Okay. <laughs> okay. It's better than saying you 5'3", bitch, because you block him immediately. No, I'm just playing. Um, anyway, so... I was excited to, even though I'm not excited for no second season, I would much rather have Bell Collective right now or even bring back, uh, put a ring on me. I, what happened to put a ring on it? All you needed to do was replace that whack ass therapist, but that's not Carlos King show. The moral of the story is I'm going to watch it. I'm going to review it for the first two episodes. If it's trash, I'm going to do it like basketball wise and I ain't fucking with it. But I'm, I think that maybe these two new couples, 
may bring us the extra that we need because I think the first season just fell because the people was whack. You know what I'm saying? The couple, I, I didn't like any of the couples. Not really. Kobe was okay. I definitely didn't like Anthony Mitch ass. I think he's on the down low. Uh, Brandon and Christina, I didn't like them either. They not my type of people. Kobe okay. Her man okay. You know, it was, it was giving nobody, nobody gave main character energy. But, like I said, I like the Detroit Bravo dude. It seems like he's doing a lot. Maybe we can see some of these nice restaurants and spots that he owns. Um, Kim and Marcel Dobine, I mean, they're in real estate. Yes, show us something different because they said it's going to, this season may have like a lot to do with music, which who do music besides Anthony and Brandon? And they failing at it. We don't. It's, <laughs> anyway, so tell me if y'all go watch. Tell me what y'all thought about the trailer and then these new couples. Hopefully they give us what we need to support a spinoff child. Or bring bring Marceau up there to kick it at one of uh, the boy Bravo clubs or something. Do something for us. Anyway, but last, last but not least, let's talk about Nelly real quick. And then I'm going to go eat lunch. Bitch, when I tell you when I found out Nelly got um, arrested... How everybody else was shocked, I wasn't shocked at all. I wasn't shocked one bit. It's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, boy, I, you know, I'm sorry. But now his lawyer, he got arrested for driving without insurance and for possession of ecstasy. Now his, um, now his lawyer is saying, no, he didn't have ecstasy. They, they searched the car and they found four pills in there. Four, four X pills. I'm not shocked. Poor Ashanti, you at home, girl, big and pregnant, or she just had that baby, who knows? And Nelly still out here acting like he's 30, 20 some years old. Nelly almost 50. Nelly in his 40s. Motherfucker, I thought you got your act together because you know Nelly used to be about that life when he used to hang out with T.I. all the time back in the day. And those from, and the people from St. Louis, tell me if I'm lying. In St. Louis, girl, it was a rumor a long time ago. Nelly, um, Nelly manager put him on blast one day and was saying that Nelly always in the clubs. All, so he was arrested in Maryland Heights coming from the casino. If anybody from St. Louis, first of all, you, you driving without insurance in Maryland Heights was the dumbest shit. You had to be drunk or on something <laughs> to think you was going to get away safe in Maryland Heights driving around with no insurance. But I digress. But anyway, so back in the day, this was like maybe five or ten years, not five years ago. This is probably like between five and ten years ago or whatever. Nelly manager put him on blast and was saying that um, he always up in the casino on that coke. This is alleged. This is just, it ain't alleged because the this his uh, manager did do this. Like, that's a fact. But we don't know if Nelly on any type of drugs or whatever. But they were saying, yeah, Nelly always be up in the motherfucking casino gambling and shit. And he be on that nose candy. Hanging around with Marcus Jewelry. <laughs> nah, I just lad. So, and he used to always be with T.I. So, I'm not shocked that they found, like, X in Nelly. You know what I'm saying? In his possession, allegedly. That's what they saying. Because the, the lawyer saying that the police officer, you know, it's fake, it's fraudulent. Anyway, child, I hope he get it together. And I pray to, to the Lord that I don't be 50 years old getting pulled over with Xanax in my purse and bottles of tequila, girl. <laughs> Tell me what y'all think about Nelly getting arrested, baby. If we thought you had grown. You then went and got Ashanti. We didn't support you throughout getting back with Ashanti, marrying her, and having a baby. And you still out here getting arrested out at the damn consent. Nelly, my St. Louis boy, my country grandma, my hot in her nigga. Please do better, baby. Do better for the Midwest. Do better for Ashanti. Fuck us. Do better for Ashanti and your newborn. Okay? Okay. Anyway, that's all I got, y'all. I'm finna take my ass to go give me something to eat. Tell me what y'all think about this new season of Love and Marriage Detroit. Are y'all gonna get him another chance? Because I know a lot of y'all is like, I do not like Ren and Stimpy. I don't like man one of these dudes. I don't like none of them. I really don't. So hopefully Carlos then gave us some motherfuckers that's likable this time. Tell me if y'all gonna um, watch the Carisha Please interview tonight. If not, even if you don't want to watch it, girl, just turn your notifications on because after the interview, I go live.
well, I still ain't conquer how to go live. Anyway, <laughs> I'll record a damn video and tell y'all about it, okay? All right. Make sure y'all subscribe. Make sure y'all like my video. It's been real. Y'all have a great day. Don't let nobody fuck up your day. Exactly. Because they was trying me today. But I ain't let it happen. Exactly. <laughs> y'all have a good day. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.